Let's move on to South 32, which produces aluminium, coal, manganese, nickel, silver, lead and zinc. Pretty broad portfolio there. Remember, this is the one that got spun off from BHP Billiton back in May 2015. I mean, it's interesting. It's a very big company, but gets almost no attention on either the local or the global markets. It is headquartered in Perth, Australia. It has a market cap of 140.2 billion rand. Uh, P.E. ratio of 14 and dividend yield here of 2.3%. Let's get the share price graph up on the screen to give us a sense. That's done fine. So that's where it comes out of Billiton. Remember, if you didn't want these, there was like a book build and you could offload them. But many customers and investors who had a big Billiton position have ended up with these and it's done well. Yeah, it's done very well, in fact. In fact, it's been one of the better commodity <laughs> performing stocks. Yeah. The company was spun off with very little debt. You know, they've got the South African, Australian and Latin American assets. Now, when you look at this, the P is 14 or 15 odd. But if you take current prices for what they sell and work out the PE in a year's time, if current prices hold, P E goes to single digits quickly. Eh? So it's exactly the same as all of the companies. The, the outlook and so the it's still nine ability in the party I would think spectrum, so. You, yeah. you know, the, the, the ability of these companies at current spot prices to absolutely spit earnings is massive. The other interesting point to make is that Billiton, prior to the split, had already done quite a lot of offloading of subpar type assets. So, for example, to talk about their South African thermal coal operations, they basically sold all of those things like Optimum Colliery, which were a bit marginal. Mm. That's where they flogged it to, you know, Optimum, and it ended up in Glencore, now it's in the Gupta kind of empire. Mm. So that's a good case in point. The stuff that really had higher margins that they preferred got kept. And that's why I think the cash flows are strong and the business looks quite so good. So this could be one certainly for a long-term portfolio. Yeah, because got the aluminium assets in South Africa, which are doing very well at that's the moment. That's hillside, bayside, yeah. and all the bauxite production and in they, Indonesia. And they, they got export coal, but they also sell coal mm. to, to Eskom. And those mm. are long-term contracts, which are maybe not glamorous, but they're very, very stable. Mm. And then they've got all the other zinc operations in the South American and the Australian operations. It's actually not yeah, a bad little supply company. Is this. stable to, to Eskom, just as an aside? We we'll, can talk about that more when we talk about yeah. Exora, in fact. All right, we'll, yeah. we'll get there. Let's call it hot or not. Paul, unless there's something else that you want to add. No, I think that's fine. Look, it has done well, but I am still concerned that there's more potential softness than upside. So I'm going to go not hot on this one too, I'm afraid. He's a real bear yeah, when no, it I'll comes. Go You're going hot. Yeah. We're never going to shake the bear out of you. <laughs> no, it just depends on whether you're 9 o'clock or 5, exactly. to, 5 to midnight. Your party, uh, you know, prospects. Yeah. <laughs>